Hi. If you're disgusted with the two-party system, you're in the right place. <laughs> it's time for a little coffee with art. I'm a little late this morning because I'm camping out and, well, you know. <laughs> but it's beautiful out here. I'm out in the uh, wooded area of Florida. And um, every weekday morning, I do a short video I call Coffee with Art. And I try to encourage a discussion about reforming the political system, specifically doing away with or reforming the two-party system. I, I Personally, I'd like to see it done away with. Um, it's gotten ridiculous. It's trench warfare. And there's never any winners. Uh, recently, we had Michael Cohen's testimony. And what a circus. Jeez. Uh, I mean, <laughs> isn't it ridiculous? So let's have a conversation about how to change it and the games they play. Oh, my gosh. So let's not play those games. <laughs> let's have discussion as opposed to their back and forth arguments, uh, their trench warfare. They've been doing the same arguments back and forth in different versions for 40, 50 years. And in many cases, the same people doing it. So this is my book I wrote. And I hope you will consider this, uh, Political Cocaine, How America Got Hooked on the Two-Party System and How to Intervene. Um, and I had hoped that I could sell enough of this uh, to keep my travels going so I could try to meet people individually. But uh, so far that hasn't worked out. So we're going to adjust the plans. But I'm going to keep going because I absolutely believe the United States of America is worth saving. And I absolutely believe the two-party system is tearing us apart and making the Congress and our government ineffective. A house divided cannot stand. So let's talk about changing it. Um, I want you, everybody to know that the reason I went with the V-log, that stands for video blog, vlog, uh, when I started numbering these, what I'm doing is I'm basically taking the topics from the book and trying to make them understandable in five to six minute segments. And hopefully start a discussion about how to change the political system so it once again is of the people, by the people, and for the people. Because I'm an avowed populist. I believe the vast American, uh, uh, vast majority of American citizens are wonderful people trying to make a good life. And yet we let this crooked system that has made corruption legal control our government. Let's change that. So I, I found out that, well, first of all, I asked the question, how is it these two groups run our government? Because it's supposed to be of the people. And I looked in the Constitution. Nothing there. I read... Washington's farewell address. Stern admonition against how awful political parties would be. Then John Adams. This is the third American presidential term now. Also sternly warring against parties, specifically two parties, and said it's the worst evil under our Constitution. How is it that people have probably told you we've had political parties from the start? We haven't. The system was meant to run without them. They're, a, they're an aberration that's killing the country. And we have to find a way to deal with it. So I hope you'll join in the discussion. What was really key to me was a guy named Richard Hofstadter. And uh, let's see if I can find his picture now. I tried to show it to you, but I see the reflection problem is a real problem here. Uh, I'm with the camping out thing. I'll have to work on that. But let me see if I can get this. This guy right here, can you see that among the camp stuff? <laughs> That's a pretty poor image. Okay, well, anyway, Richard Hofstadter, I remember when we first were watching TV at home, and I, I was, I like politics from a, uh, an early age. Richard Hofstadter was a very common commentator in the 60s and 70s on a lot of uh, political broadcasts for all the major networks. We only got CBS, that's where I saw him. Um, but when I discovered his book, The Idea of a Party System, that really absolutely convinced me that the po political party system had to be destroyed. Because the colonists 
hated political parties. They felt they were evil. Many of those who backed the revolution blamed the fact of the revolution on the political parties in Great Britain. And the authors that were selling, just consider now, at the time of the, of the colonies, the only media they had was newspaper and books. And what Hofstetter did is he uh, researched the books that were selling at the, in the colonies in, I believe it was 20 years before the revolution and through the time of the revolution. And over 80% of the authors that were selling as popular authors hated political parties and wrote about the evils of political parties. Over 80% of what was selling. What does that tell you? The colonists hated parties. They viewed political parties as evil. And I think they were right. That's the reason they're not in the Constitution. And do you remember when they tried to sell the population on the Constitution, the Federalist Papers. You had uh, Alexander Hamilton and James Madison working together, but under pseudonyms, because they didn't want to use their right, real names and give any implication that there was a political party involved in selling this new Constitution, because they felt that would be the death of the process. And yet here we are today. The political parties have been allowed to take over everything. Okay, we're going to discuss how to change that. I hope you'll join us. I hope you have a wonderful day today. Every day is a gift. That's why they call it the present. So I hope you unwrap your present for today with somebody special. Have a great day.